Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. Today's video has got some shabby chic, some cottage core, and just a little bit of glam thrown into it. So let's get started. My first piece is a foam board that I cut out in this shape. And I didn't actually paint it because it was already white. Now this is a napkin that I've used before in several projects and I'm putting it on with DIY liquid patina. And I'm just adding a little bit at a time, just so that it will be easier to keep the wrinkles down. Now, if you'll notice, um, I keep pressing down on that napkin a little bit, and that's just with a little piece of saran wrap that I've kind of like smudged together. And I actually push down very gentle on it. Once I get it all put on, then I use like a little finger sander to sand off those extra edges of it. So this is a mold that I actually made with hot glue and it is from the IOD frames mold and it's really large and I actually spray painted it white first um, and I'm using Rust-Oleum chiffon cream to put a good coat of paint on it. And I think it takes about two coats of it because hot glue comes out clear. Now on Saturday at 7 a.m., I'm going to post a video with a few more projects that I couldn't fit in today, but it's also going to be a tutorial on using hot glue in your molds. So I have added this frame onto that piece of foam board. It's all dry by now. And then this is a little mold, and it's two little birds that I guess they're kissing. Um, and it is also made with hot glue. And I painted it um, with the chiffon cream, and I put some gold gilding wax on it. And I'm just putting that down with hot glue because it will just stick. The, the hot glue sticks to the hot glue so well. And I just press down on it pretty firm for several minutes just to make sure it sticks and that it doesn't pull up in the corners. Then what I do is I go back and I put gold gilding wax all over the frame. And this is what the finished product looks like. And that's that same frame that I have used in several of my videos that I just love. I just love the design of it so much. And so I just keep adding some different pieces to it to give you inspiration for what you can do with some frames because I like having more than one thing that I can put in a frame. Now on the back side of that foam board, I'm painting that with some paint that I got at Hobby Lobby actually several years ago. And it's by Folk Art and it's called Home Decor Chalk Paint. And the color is nautical. So I can't remember if I put one or two coats of chalk paint onto this board. Um, but I think I put two because when you paint something with darker paint, then sometimes you might have some little spots that you need to cover up that you maybe missed in the past. Um, and so I go ahead and get that all painted. And then I'm going to put a sealer on it. Okay, here's the glam. Now, this is a transfer that is brand new, and you can get it at Micah Daughters, and I will make sure that I link it in the description box below. So, it's redesigned with Prima, and the name of the transfer is called House of Dam Damask, or Damask, however you want to say it. Now, this was the first time that I have used one of these gold transfers, um, so I really wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. Um, but I worked really hard to make sure it was put down. And now look at it when I start to pull it up. <gasps> oh, if you like gold and if you like metallic things, this is your jam. I'm telling you, it is so, so pretty. Like the, the video just doesn't do it justice. Now, one of the things that I did not do is with regular transfers, you kind of will go back and rub over it, but I didn't with this one. And I'm going to figure out how to use the rest of that transfer on something else, but it's too pretty to throw that extra little piece of plastic away. So what do you think? Oh, I love this. 
But then y'all know me. I like gold stuff. I like glam. Um, and so this one is just so beautiful. And um, navy is really popular right now. So um, this is a really large transfer that you could actually use on a piece of furniture. Now, my next piece is this big box, and it is so, so heavy. And I found it at a thrift shop, and I think I actually paid $12 for it um, because I wanted it that bad. Um, it's so, so pretty. Um, but I didn't want to keep it red. So I'm uh, using Dixie Belle Soft Pink. Well, this is one of those projects that you do and you don't like. And then you just set it aside until you figure out what you're going to do. Um, because after I got it all painted, then I thought, well, it was a little bit too pink. So I put white wax on it. Well, then I didn't like it. And it, the pink just kind of looked a little bit like Pepto-Bismol. So I just kind of let it set for a little bit until I could figure out what to do. So I decided, actually yesterday, that I was going to put some dark wax on it. Now this is Dixie Belle Grunge Gray. And I think it may be one of my new favorite things to put on something to finish it off with. I just love the way that this turned out. Now, because I've already got a coat of clear wax on it, then that makes it okay to put this dark wax on it. But if I didn't already have that clear wax on it from when I first started finishing it off, I would never want to put a dark wax straight onto it because if you don't like it, it's not coming off. And you'll notice that I put a little bit on and then I use actually like a shop towel that um, I get at Home Depot. They're the white shop towels or you can buy the blue ones. But just do a little bit and then wipe it off and then do a little bit more and wipe it off because the longer it sits on there, the harder it's going to be to get it off. So it's better to do just a little bit and wipe it off. And then if you want to add some more to it, then do that. Um, but you don't want to let it sit too long. And then what I really like about this um, gray wax is that it sinks into the details and you're not going to believe what it looks like at the end. It is such a transformation. And I love it because after I painted it with that white wax, I didn't like it. In fact, it sat there probably for about a week before I decided what I wanted to do with it. And I was just about ready to give up on it when I decided to put this dark wax on it. So if you like dark wax, this is a really good wax um, because it's not brown but it's not black either it's that grunge gray and so i really like the effect that it gives so i hope you like this too okay so once i finish that top piece then i start on the bottom and actually one of the things that i didn't mention was when i bought this at the thrift shop it had like a piece of not even felt on the bottom like some jewelry boxes do it was kind of this rubbery plastic and it smelled so bad. And so um, I pulled it off and it was stuck really hard. And so I had to scrape it off and soak it. And then I went back and painted over it. Uh, but it took a while to get that off. But I didn't want to leave that on. Now, I did not put wax on the inside of it. Um, I'm just going to leave that plain pink. And as I'm watching this video and doing my voiceover, I just realized I probably need to put something on the inside of it, maybe just a little transfer. Just when you open it up, it'll be something extra. So I think I'm going to do that. But now look at this. It does not even look like it did when I first started on it. Now, I hope you like it, but um, I just didn't like it that plain pink. Um, but now I really like it. And I love that that wax really, really pulls out the details on it. But it's beautiful and it is so, so heavy. And I probably spent too much money on it. So if you're liking the video so far, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, why don't you do that and become part of our family? Now, this next piece is something that I've had for a while. <laughs> and it was one of those things that I bought it and then I just didn't like it. Um, and so I painted it this color and then I didn't like it. And so I let it sit around for a little bit. And so once I started using paint inlays um, and became really comfortable with them, I thought, I think I'm going to do something with this. 
Um, so what I'm using now is Dixie Belle Mint Julep. So because I've already painted it, I didn't need to put two coats on it. But when you put a paint inlay on it, then um, you paint it once, let it dry, and then paint it the second time and make sure that you have enough paint on it. And then one of my viewers told me about this, and ever since I've started doing this, the paint inlays work like a charm. So I had already measured off these little pieces. Oh, and this is an IOD paint inlay, and it's called Rose Chintz. So I'd already measured off all those little pieces, and then I kind of lay them over to the side, and then I missed them with water. After putting on that second coat, I missed them with water. I lay it down. And then I used a dry brush to kind of press down that paint inlay. And then I missed it again, just so that it starts to set in. And then you need to let it sit for about an hour. And if you're impatient like I am sometimes, you can use like a heat gun to go ahead and dry it. And then once it gets all finished, and then the color is not dark anymore on that paint inlay, and it starts to look like it does when you first cut it up, then that lets you know that it's dry. So then you're going to mist it again, and you let it sit for 60 seconds. And then once that's all ready, then you um, pull off the paint inlays. And that is what it looks like when it's dry, and see I'm misting it now, and you're gonna notice that sometimes that part in the middle looks a little shiny, and it's because the water kind of sprayed more into that middle section, and I go back and clean that up. So you get it all misted, wait 60 seconds, and then you start to pull it off. Now, if it grabs at all, spray it just a little bit more, but oh, look at this. Oh, it's so pretty. And I like green and pink a lot. And for some reason, this rose chance reminds me of maybe something that my grandmother would have had in her house. Um, but I love it. Now, remember those little strips of paint inlay? You can use them again. But because I have painted with a not a white color, but a darker color, that's going to like add on to that paint inlay. So when I use it again, I need to either use this same color mint julep or when I put the put it on again as a paint inlay then that green that's on the background that was kind of absorbed a little bit that's going to show up but it's just some little strips and I love it so now I let it sit for a pretty good while and then when I added the paint inlay to it then I liked it and then on that little white keyhole I actually put a little teeny flower on there. Okay, so here's my next piece. This is one of those cardboard um, pumpkins that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Now, I love these because you can do so, so many things with them, but you have to get that paper off, and that's kind of messy, and it takes a while. And I would say that I would show y'all how I do that, but <laughs> it's really messy. So you can sometimes paint over it if you want to, but... I, I try to get it off. And this is Dixie Belle Farm Fresh. Well, once I started painting it, I didn't like that green at all. And But I'm never one to give up at all. And I thought, it just looked a little bit of lime green to me. But um, I went on and finished painting it, and then it hit me. I thought, oh, I can use that rose chintz paint inlay, inlay on that as well. And, it be, and it's adding to that green, but it's just a different color green. So... I let that dry, and I put my second coat of paint on it, and then I put my paint inlay on it, and I go through that same process. And then, actually, while that paint inlay is drying, I take that pumpkin, and I set it straight up, and then I paint the back of the pumpkin. Because if I put this in my booth, I want to make sure that the back side of it is painted as well. But... I really like the way it turned out. And then I'm going to add um, just a little bow to it. 
and I'm going to add like a little paper flower on it. But look at this. Now, I know these are spring colors, but there are some of us who have these colors in our house all year round. And remember, I told you, I think in my last video or the last one, is that pumpkins are one of those things that you can decorate them any color to match the different rooms in your home. Okay, my last project is going to be a little box because my granddaughter is take in a ballet camp this week and I made this um, to give to her teacher. And so these are some molds that I bought off of Etsy, I think. I will make sure to link them in the description box. And it's just some different little ballet things. And then this extra little mold to the left is like some teacups. And the only reason I have it out is because when you're making resin, um, if you have any extra, you don't want to waste it. And when you mix up resin, you have two different parts, and you put one part in the cup, and then you put the equal part of the other part in it, mix it up, pour it into your molds, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and when you pull it out, it's permanent. And But I'm using like a little metal stick to get that resin to go up in those little corners of the ballerinas. So have you used resin before? I love it. Um, it can be kind of pricey, um, but it's good when you want something to be permanent and that you, you know, don't want it to kind of chip off later like clay, like air dry clay. Now, this is just like a little pencil box that came in a desk set. And this is Waverly Ballet Slipper Pink. Um, I think I am constantly searching for my favorite pink, but it seems I always come back to this Waverly color. I just seem to like this the most. And I paint the entire outside of the box, and then um, I go and paint, all, paint the inside of it as well, and then um, I have sealed it because I'm going to be putting the molds on it from there. Now, see how they come out? And they come out white. And then once they come out, and I think on one of them, the little ballerina lost her foot, but that's okay. Um, and so um, I'm painting them white, and then I'm putting them, I'm going to be putting them on with tight bond glue. Now, that little box has four different sides, and so I put one little mold on one side with tight bond glue, and then I'll let it sit for just a little bit until it sets up, and then I turn it over to the next side, and I put the next mold on it, and then I kind of do that, and it really doesn't take that long because tight bond glue sets up pretty fast, um, but I don't want to put them all on there at one time, but now if you're in a hurry and you have to, it's okay. You'll just need to maybe use a little bit of blue painter's tape um, to kind of hold them down until that tight bond glue sets up. But tomorrow, um, I will take her to ballet camp, and it's the last day that I have her for the week, so I'm excited. I haven't even told her that I was making this, so she'll be excited to be able to give her ballet teacher um, this little gift at the end of the week. Um, this is her first time for taking ballet, and she's been so, so excited, and it's so sweet to see her walk in there with the little leotards, and she's got her hair in a braid, and she just gets so excited, um, and she's taking this camp with her best friend, so um, <laughs> when I pick her up and I ask her what she did, she really can't remember what she did, but she does know that she had a good time, so I'm not sure if she'll stick with ballet, um, because she has started talking about taking gymnastics, but she's only four, so she's got plenty of time to think about what she's going to do um, as she gets a little bit older. And this is the bigger ballerina that I made, but I just think they're so sweet. And this is what the box looks like. What do you think? Now, when I finish these different pictures, you're going to see a couple slides, and it's going to be of three projects. And I, this will air Saturday morning at 7 a.m., and I will attach the clips that will show you how to make molds with your hot glue gun. So make sure to be watching Saturday morning, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, or just some other time. So friends, here we are. We're at the end of the video. 
it seems like um, it goes so fast for me. Well, not really, not when I'm making all the stuff, but when I'm doing this voiceover, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is already, it's already over. So in the comments, tell me what's your favorite today. And tell me what you think about that pink box right there. Do you like the grunge gray or do you like it better with like a white wax on it? Or I could have put gold gilding wax on it, but I didn't. Um, and tell me, have you tried a paint inlay? Um, in the beginning, I was a little scared of them, but now I really like them and I feel really comfortable. And I think it's just one of those things. It just takes a little bit of practice. But the game changer was when the viewer told me to mist it before I laid it down. So friends, make sure to like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that and become part of our family. I hope you have a great rest of the week and I'll see you Saturday morning at seven o'clock.